uh, Aspen Avidine and Dine and uh, Dealers. And, They're not uh, long. And then you go to Kansas offer, City. Offering and all levels of avionics upgrades, repair, and service to the aviation market in St. Louis. Based in Creveport. Uh, everything. And we do everything from a full overhaul to uh, minor, minor service. We install G5s. So they do the unusual uh, attitude. E5 all the way up to the E1000s and Aspen and uh, yes. full Avidine line. Alright, and so operating an aircraft that has undergone maintenance and maintenance without the uh, associated maintenance logbook entry, places the owner operator on the aircraft, uh, the owner operator then takes over the maintenance of the aircraft and maintains it until the aircraft is ready for flight. Aircraft is not been approved for return to service or proper pilot regulations. Okay? What it says is uh, airworthy means the aircraft conforms to its type design and is in condition for safe operation. We talked about the type sticks and data sheets. Here's the typical standard airworthiness certificate. Anybody recognize those? Everybody have one of those? Okay. And that's the first thing that's displayed in the aircraft, isn't it? Behind it, that's simply what's displayed in the aircraft for people to see. So, what's the important part of that? Conform to the type certificate, therefore, in condition for safe operation. Okay, so the owner operator is responsible for compliance with AED. So, even though the uh, mechanic may say, hey, all these done, all these signed off, you're still ultimately responsible for those. What is an AMOC? It's an alternative method of compliance, uh, reference to advisory circular 39 10. Uh, in the case of the, uh, that the compliance requirements for the AD do not fit your operation, it's not going to work for you, there is an apply for an alternative method of compliance, uh, which will go to that uh, region that uh, issued that AD. Okay. The last three years, we've had seven carriers have an already small pool of aviation-specific insurance carriers. That's a big loss for us. It's a big loss for you. It means there's less competition. There are less, less options. So what are pilots experiencing? Pilots who are 70 and older are seeing prices go up. Options are going down. What is your coverage available? Some carriers require pilots 75 and up to go for basic med. Back to third class medicals every other year. And a number of them, when the pilots hit 80, uh, the first class medical is required annually. Now it comes to Missouri. We lost five carriers who were covered in the state of Missouri uh, two years ago out of the total market of less than 20. That's a huge impact to the options for we can take our clients. So when you guys are talking about return to service of the aircraft and, and uh, making sure the aircraft is in airworthy condition, Whenever you take an aircraft to a maintenance shop or a facility or you're having your APIA uh, work on it, make sure that it is returned to service. The work is completed before you operate the aircraft. That is, that is very important for two reasons. One, if it's not, you may actually invalidate your policy. So you don't have the coverage you think you have if it has not been formally returned to service. Second of all, the maintenance shop they may have, we hope they have, and we're going to talk about it in more detail in a second, products and completed operations coverage, meaning the op, their work has to have been completed in, in order for their coverage to apply in the situation where your aircraft is damaged. They're going to go back and say, well, was the aircraft returned to service? Because the shop only has coverage for completed operations. So that's very, very important. Another thing to think about is uh, on the ADs and compliance with the ADs. If you have a shop doing a pre-buy inspection on an aircraft that you're looking at buying, and they're going through the log books, and they're looking to make sure all the ADs are complied with, and they say, yes, they are, and you, you acquire the airplane, a few months down the road, you're having another maintenance another shop uh, do an inspection on it, and they find, uh, say, a major AD that hasn't been complied with. Well. Again, going back to the traditional general liability insurance for the maintenance shop that did the work, the, the pre-buy inspection plan, there has to be bodily injury or property damage for a traditional general liability policy to come into play. So if you sue that shop saying, look, you missed that spar inspection, 
uh, turns out that this is going to cost me thousands of dollars, what, what are we going to do here? Their insurance company is say, well, there was no property damage or there was no bodily injury, so there's no coverage. But if they have a professional liability policy, that would, that would come into play. So if you're going to have a shop do a, a pre-buy inspection uh, on your behalf, make sure they have professional liability coverage. Um, another comment, we're talking about the record keeping aspect of it. Uh, so physical damage to technical records. So if there's a hangar fire or there's a fire at your home and you have uh, log books uh, for the aircraft, you know, uh, we, have, we have a 1947 J3 Cub. We got some pretty old log books accompanied uh, uh, with our with our um, our aircraft. Now we have taken a lot of those records, actually all of those, and digitized those. But if you haven't, look into your aircraft policy and see if you have coverage for technical records, because we all know that the value of those of those aircraft records, those logs, uh, have actually had on the aircraft. So it's meaningful. So look through your aircraft policy to see if you have coverage for that. If you do some of the maintenance yourself, or maybe it's an experimental aircraft and your name's on the data plate, and then you go and sell that aircraft, you've got some exposure. And if that aircraft flies away, and then a month, two months down the road, something bad happens, I guarantee it, they're gonna be knocking on your door saying you, you improperly maintain that aircraft and that's what caused it to crash. And, and then the lawyers are gonna get involved. Uh, uh, I got my EAA shirt on. I'm, I'm ready to go up there. We've got four or five weeks. We're ready to start the EAA Venture. And the EAA does a really good job. Uh, they have a customized policy through Global Aerospace. And one of the benefits of the Global Aerospace EAA endorsement is it has liability coverage for up to 12 months after you sell the aircraft. So you sell the aircraft, it flies away, you can sleep at night for at least 12 months, at least until it gets to its next uh, annual inspection, that uh, you've got some liability coverage should something bad happen and you get sued.